Okay guys, I had a request on my motor mount setup today. And uh, the gentleman did say that, you know, he had hoped it was a part that I ordered, but actually it is a part that I modified from a piece of uh, aluminum plate. Here's the, here's the plate. As you can see, I messed up and drilled the holes on the wrong angle the first time and my wires were facing this direction coming out towards the front which made them way too close to the edge of the of the actual chassis like if I was to hit something I thought maybe you know I'd pinch them so I re-drilled them out turned it so it's you know 180 degrees um, anyhow that's the motor mount right there so basically what I did was I drilled two five millimeter holes because this motor requires four millimeter bolts and I wanted a little bit of movement in there washers long enough bolts to go through the plate which is just a piece of aluminum um, tubing I turned into an angle bracket. If you could find a piece of aluminum angle bracket it would work just fine. Um, and then what I did is on the bottom I set my plate in place with the motor mounted and I took a hammer and a punch and I laid it down on this side and had somebody help me hold it. And I took a hammer and a punch and I, in the center of each slot I put my mid-size pinion gear on which is the one that's on now 16 and I, I drilled my holes in the center of those slots basically so if I want to adjust and put a different size pinion gear on there I can use the factory holes factory adjustments and factory screws and not have to really drill any holes in the chassis or anything like that I didn't have to put spacers on here or anything like that I did cut away a little bit of the plastic here next to the motor and obviously for the heat sink um, the heat sink does make it so I can't really go any smaller on a gear because it's keeping me from going any closer here. If I trim the back of this aluminum, I should be able to um, slide the motor over far enough to put like a 14 tooth on here, which is what I'm thinking will be good for 6S. It's just too fast top speed wise that the tires won't handle it. The rig itself I don't think is, is really quite meant for 6S. But anyhow, that was my setup for my motor mount. It's pretty simple. If you guys would like measurements and instructions on this on how to make it, just ask me. I would be glad to take this off. Uh, next time I do a, a gear swap, I'll go ahead and just take the truck off because I'll have to loosen it anyways. I'll take the motor off the truck. I'll give you the actual dimensions on the bottom of the plate, how much material I had to take off to make it fit. I'll give you a full dimension of the plate and specifications on what holes to drill and tap. And also, on the other side of the aluminum, I did tap the aluminum, but on the other side of the aluminum where this bolt goes through, I super glued a nut to it so it had something to bite to. So I drilled my holes, tapped them, threaded my screws into them, tightened my nuts down, and uh, super glued the face of the nut so it sits against that aluminum plate. But I can take it all apart and explain it if you'd like. Um, this is my, my 6S setup right now. I'm waiting for the higher kilogram servo to come in, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do with this truck. I'm going to start on another project, but uh, this one's all done. I'm waiting for my new fan for here so I can get the correct size back on here instead of these two smaller ones. But... Uh, I used solder shrink connectors, which basically there's solder in the center of these for the wires. You get them hot and they melt and the solder melts inside of the shrink connector. You don't have to crimp anything and it's actually soldering it just like it would be if you were to solder it and put shrink wrap around it. But they're much easier to use, much quicker. They hold up real well to this kind of work and they're waterproof. That's why I like them. Um, the center support bracket, if anybody would like to know how I made that, I can give you the specifications, what materials I use, how far apart the holes need to be here, how, how tall this piece needs to be after you drill down into the plastic and drill up into the plastic so that the post has a place to sit. Um, also, I'll give you guys what kind of lube I'm running inside of my differentials and not just in the actual gear part that I made the video of, but just lube in the case. So the pinion gear that comes in and the ring gear have a nice lubrication um, keeps them from getting hot also helps keep them from getting worn out you got to have enough lube in there to make sure that these little pinion bearings get oil if they don't get oil they get hot they seize up and you saw what happened on the other video it uh, melts the top of the case causes a whole bunch of problems and a bunch of time and aggravation that shouldn't have shouldn't have happened but uh, there again that's what I'm running I'm running 160 amp hobby wing you see the grass down in there from the days run up to blow it out tomorrow um, it's just a it's just a hex six, but it's a hobby wing. Um, I believe they're a max eight. It's it's the same thing. I did switch mine over to Dean's plug because all of my batteries are Dean's plug batteries, and I don't run rigs that are super big. So 
Um, I don't run 6S a lot on this because it's so ridiculously fast. It's it's kind of crazy. 4S is plenty with this motor setup. Plenty fast enough for the truck. It pulls wheelies, has all kinds of power. Um, in my opinion, I would not go any higher than 4S on this truck unless you're just doing some fun speed runs. I wouldn't do any bashing on, 4, on uh, 6S. 4S is perfect. Uh, anyways... I did put uh, some loom on here to keep the wires away from each other. If there is to be a fire or anything like that, or if something does start to melt down, it does help protect all your servo wires and, and everything else, you know, your cooling fan wires. Keeps them all protected, and it also keeps them up out of the way so you don't have to worry about them getting caught in the gear or anything like that. And I just zip-tied everything along and made, made it nice and neat, you know, so everything is, is out of the way, and you don't have to worry about, you know, accidentally pinching it or, or having it hang out. And, Plus, I like the way it looks. It's nice and neat. It looks professional that way. Um, so anyways, if you guys have any questions, I am going to be doing a few more things to this truck about uh, differential lube inside of there. I want to change a little bit of that. I'm going to put some 1 million K in here like I stated. I, I'm going to do that just to help keep the front tires from ballooning, put a little more power to the rear. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do 100 weight in the rear shocks, 90 up front. So when I get done with this other video, um, you guys will see all the stuff I'm upgrading. I'm going to go ahead and do a tutorial on how to take it apart. So if you guys have any questions or anything like that, get a hold of me. You know where I'm at, and uh, you know what I'm doing. So anyhow, thank you very much for watching my, my channel.